We have Maria Nelson and Chase Cummings from Pepin County. All right, thank you, Jay. So Wisconsin's smallest county is working to build community capacity to address water quality issues with a current focus on nitrates in the groundwater. Pepin County is the, located in west central Wisconsin along the Mississippi River. Currently, we're primarily most known for being the birthplace of Laura Ingalls Wilder. Our team consists of myself, Chase, Heidi Stewart, who is our public health director, and Mike Travis, who is with University of Wisconsin Extension. Um, so today, Chase is going to provide some background information about how we got involved in the Think Water program. We will both be describing how Pepin County has taken steps to implement systems thinking into addressing our water quality challenges. Chase will touch on what we've learned along the way, and then I will talk about what we expect as our next steps. All right, thanks, Maria. Um, so as Maria mentioned, we're the, uh, on the west central part of Wisconsin. Uh, Pepin County is located. Uh, we're along the Mississippi River and in the unglaciated area of Wisconsin. So our steep uh, valleys and steep hillsides uh, provide a picturesque setting for the agriculture that dominates our community. Um, like most of Wisconsin, dairy farming has been uh, central to the fabric of Pepin County's economy. However, in more recent history, the land that grew an assortment of rotated crops and pasture land has given way uh, and is now dominated by a simplified corn-based agronomic system. With this backdrop, groundwater sampling over the past 30 years has revealed a disturbing trend of increasing nitrate concentrations in our drinking water wells across the county. The most vulnerable sandy valleys within our, our county have exhibited nitrate levels uh, in our drinking water that exceed the safe drinking water limit for nitrate of 10 milligrams per liter. Our traditional approaches to this issue uh, within the county involved individual county departments working on a case-by-case -case issues uh, with seldom consultation among those departments. In a way, uh, it was a fragmented approach uh, circling the, the real issue. We were just putting out fires, basically, and uh, failing to consider that big picture. Four years ago, uh, our four departments of, of public health, uh, land management and zoning, land conservation, and UW Extension, we started to discuss collectively how we could coordinate our groundwater efforts uh, and provide a better uh, services within Pepin County. While that was an improvement to what we were doing uh, and over, an improvement to our past practices, it still wasn't as effective as we would have liked it to be. So that sporadic um, effort and uh, growing public concern for water quality uh, led us to step up, our, step up our efforts. And that's where we stumbled upon um, our Think Water program. So our goal is to reverse the trend and see groundwater uh, quality improving in our community. Our new systems thinking approach uh, has helped us to better understand the parts of our water quality system and the various perspectives that needed to be considered. We need to engage more Pepin County stakeholders and to build the necessary uh, community capacity to evoke the needed change. <clears throat> so using our, our skills that we learned through Thinkwater School, uh, we developed our meta map of our issue. <clears throat> and if you focus on the left-hand side of our, of our map, uh, we've established the relationships connected to nitrates in our groundwater, uh, particularly how our nitrates affect public health. We also recognize that uh, the impacts of our natural landscape and the construction of our wells and their impacts on that nitrate concentration that we're seeing in the well uh, also was very important. We're also recognizing that uh, there are land use impacts and influences um, that are taking place on the land that affect those nitrates as well. On the right side of our map, uh, we show the considerations of nitrates on public health and the connections that uh, the information uh, has to our, our county programming and the actions and best management practices that uh, we have on the land uh, that might be needed on the land. Particularly in the upper right-hand corner of our map, uh, we have established a local water advisory group locally, and we've identified that through our mapping process and through our peers within our cohort of the uh, Think Water School. 
Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, through the Water Advisory Group, we are working to build the necessary capacity within the community to effectively address our nitrate issue. So this is a list of our participants in our Water Advisory Group. Uh, these are stakeholders that we've identified uh, through a number of different processes, but also including the Water Advisory Group themselves in establishing who those stakeholders need to be. Um, these individuals have their own social networks, and uh, they help uh, to carry the conversation and bring ideas back to the Water Advisory Group. All right. Through our participation in the Wisconsin Think Water Program, our cohorts encouraged us to have collective conversations with these community stakeholders. The tools we learned through the implementation of systems thinking were instrumental in helping our group formulate our programming efforts, select members of our water advisory group that represent a diversity of interest and perspectives, convey information, and evaluate our efforts. In my opinion, the evaluation or MAC component of systems thinking has been the most critical as it provided structure to our community conversations about the extent of groundwater contamination and education about potential solutions that could help to reverse the trend. After each meeting, we evaluate our programming efforts to determine better approaches. As a result, more intentional programming has been established to address our water issues. Additionally, programming within our offices are changing due to the integration of systems thinking. So realizing the complexity of the problem um, and the, the land use that dominates our landscape, the majority of the land use is agriculture, our conversations are, are tending to lean towards that agricultural discussion. And we know our agricultural systems are very complex and our systems thinking approach has allowed us uh, to ask ourselves, what is really at the root of the problem? So while we're still on a path to discovery we, um, and build a shared understanding of our problem, we have acknowledged a few boundaries. So these boundaries are things, uh, or separate uh, the things that we have identified uh, that might be beyond our local control. Uh, items such as you know, commodity markets, uh, global trade and economics, uh, national legislative processes. Uh, we put those topics outside of our boundary for now. Um, just so we can uh, focus our control and, and leverage um, local uh, issues first. However, recognizing though that those outside forces and those things that are outside our boundary may be some of the, the core things that are at the root of our problem and the root of our nitrate issue. So as we move through our systems thinking approach with our water advisory group, uh, we anticipate that some of those items that we've identified that are beyond our local control uh, may come into the fold in, in part of our discussions uh, to build that level of understanding and also the capacity moving forward to address that nitrate issue. So as we know, true complexity of the issue continues to remind us of the need to devote time to systems thinking. So some of the things that we've learned is, is basically you know, time for action. Uh, responses and feedback that we've had through part of our MAC process um, is that we want change now. Some people want, change, want or expect change sooner than later. Um, but understanding that it will take time for our nitrate trend to actually change is also part of that, that time commitment. And commitment uh, not only f um, uh, to our water advisory group efforts uh, and commitment by those individuals, but also a commitment to systems thinking and uh, the application of systems thinking uh, doesn't come without uh, a major time commitment. Uh, we also um, come upon some challenges um, and some of our challenges that we've uh, uh, realized amongst ourselves within our own team at, at Pepin County uh, is also that time commitment, but also building that shared understanding of what the of the, what the issue or the potential causes of the issue are, and as we've worked through those in our in our systems thinking team, we're also looking at other challenges um, within the community members that are participating uh, with our water advisory group, and those are some of those challenges such as personalities and different perspectives that uh, we face with uh, dealing with the public, and also balancing that motivation and skepticism. Um, of others. Okay. As we move forward, we will continue to map each topic within the Water Advisory Group. We will note the relationships that stand out, practices with the most relationships, or the greatest impact. These practices or strategies then will be
become our priority for implement implementation in order to reverse our water quality trend. We will continue to share systems thinking approaches with others, build relationships, evaluate our programming and educational outreach efforts, and develop stakeholders dedicating, dedicated to the reversing the trend through the implementation of best management practices and sustainable uses of the land. In summary, given the change in our groundwater quality and the changing rural economy, we have incorporated systems thinking strategies and approaches to do a better job of engaging people on the issue. The Water Advisory Group serves as a forum for the building of a shared understanding of the issue as well as the relationships and perspectives that help shape it. The complexity of the issue is truly wicked and does not come without its setbacks, but sticking with the systems thinking approach has helped us move in the direction of reversing the trend. Building the sh shared understanding of the issue seemed to be the easiest part. Everyone wants clean water. The most challenging is helping to develop a shared understanding of the multiple strategies and practices that need to be implemented to resolve the issue. We are optimistic that we will be able to reverse the trend and that this approach has the potential to address larger scale water issues across the country and the world. Thank you. Thank you.